G'day, welcome back to the No Idea Racing channel. Uh, this is part four of our DIY cart dyno build. Uh, and if you're not familiar with the build, um, go back and look at the first three videos in the playlist to have a look at how we've put this together uh, as a cheap portable dyno that's hopefully going to be pretty accurate. Today we're going to look at some of the limitations of the setup we've got uh, and the things that we can do to overcome them. The first thing we need to do is hit the whiteboard and have a look at some of the maths in terms of how we're getting our horsepower and torque graphs. Okay, so I lied. I don't have a whiteboard and most of the stuff I know comes directly from Google. In this case, we can see the calculation for hydraulic horsepower being pressure multiplied by flow divided by something called a conversion factor, in this case 1714. Once we know our power, we can use another equation to work out torque. We can take our horsepower, multiply it by another conversion factor, and then divide that by RPM. That way we can graph both our horsepower and our torque. Now that we know where our horsepower and torque figures come from, it's clear that we've got a maximum horsepower that we can measure with this dyno unit. Essentially, there's only so much fluid we can flow through this pump, and there's only so much pressure that we can pick up with our pressure transducer. Here's where we get to a little bit of a problem. Our pump is rated to 250 bar, flowing at 30 millilitres every re revolution, but our pressure transducer, the only ones that I could find with a voltage signal, only go up to 200 bar. And we found from our early dyno tests that we're approaching or right on the top of that scale. So, ideally we'd like to change these up to a 250 bar sensor. Um, but as I said, they're really hard to find in a voltage output sensor. Um, if you know where you can get some, please let me know. The other thing we could do is upsize our pump. So it's pumping more than 30 mils of fluid every revolution. Uh, and that's something that's doable, but it's a fairly significant cost to increase the size of the pump. Which leaves us with one option that we're going to try today. Because horsepower is a function of both flow and pressure, if we increase one, we should be able to get away with a lower reading in the opposing one. So if I increase the flow, then I should be seeing less pressure at my pressure transducer after this valve. Oh, hey, dog. You come to do some work? No, not interested in work. Sorry about that. Apprentice mechanic having some time off. So, if we could increase how much this pump is flowing, we should be able to get away with lower readings and stay under our 200 bar limit of our pressure transducer. The way we're going to do that is not by changing the pump, but changing how fast the pump is spun. This pump in its early runs uh, had an 82 sprocket on it. We're going to try it at 82, we're going to do a run, and then we're going to do a run as small a sprocket as we can, uh, and we're going to go down to 72 for that because that's what I have on hand. So, it's 10 teeth which while this is an 82 and 72, this is a 10 teeth difference between these two sprockets. So it's a fairly significant change in size. By making that significant change in size, we should actually increase the amount of revolutions of the axle and increase how much fluid is running through the system. We'll still be within the range of the pump, which I think the maximum is 3,000 revolutions per minute. Um, but we will increase the flow, and therefore we should be able to get away with less pressure on the system, which means that our transducer won't max out, and we'll get good, reliable data. So today's job is we're going to set it up with the 82, we'll do a dyno run. Uh, this time I'll show you from where I sit what it looks like on the Micron 5, and then we're going to swap over to a 72, do another run, and have a look at the graphs and see what the pressure is telling us between the two. If it all works well, we should see two things. Number one, we should see the pressure lower 
even though we're running theoretically the same horsepower. And the second thing we should see is a fairly consistent horsepower reading. So our first one shouldn't be 16 horsepower and our second one 20 horsepower. They should be within, I'd like to see within one horsepower, even though we're changing the gearing. So let's get into it, uh, make some noise, change those gears and have a look at the graphs. Okay, the plan here was to take you along and show you what it looks like from the driver's seat uh, and hopefully be able to pick up some of the live data from my Micron screen. Unfortunately, light conditions were not real good and I forgot to turn on the backlight, so that's my bad. Uh, what you can see, however, is that the dyno is being operated as per normal. Uh, so we screw the valve right in to the greatest restriction, floor the throttle, and then let the engine come up to higher revs by slowly unscrewing that needle valve. Uh, if you have a look, quick look at the screen, you might be able to make out top left is my dyno pressure sensor. Uh, bottom left is my lambda, which is my air fuel. Then top right is engine temp. And bottom right is my external voltage. Now that we've done the runs and downloaded the data, let's have a look at the graphs. The first two graphs are from our 82 tooth rear sprocket. Our first graph is a graph against time, and we can see four lines. The blue line is our dyno pressure sensor, purple is RPM, orange is horsepower, and red is torque. If you look at each of the lines, there's a small red triangle. That shows the maximum figure on each line. And if you look up in the top right hand corner, you can see what those figures are for your max horsepower, torque, and even the pressure sensor maximum. If we take that data and put it onto a graph against RPM, we go to three lines. We've still got our dyno pressure, we've got our horsepower, and we've got our torque. What's concerning is that the blue line, dyno pressure, seems to max out at the top of its scale for a certain period of time. Let's now look at our graphs for our 72 tooth rear sprocket. Once again, the colors are all the same. Blue being that pressure sensor, purple RPM, orange horsepower and red torque. This time we can see that those red triangles are still within around one horsepower or one foot pound of torque from our previous graphs. But we can see that blue line of our dyno pressure sensor not getting to the top and staying maxed out of its range. Let's convert that into our graph against RPM and see if it still looks the same. Well here we can see the graph against RPM. Uh, once again it has our dyno pressure in blue, horsepower in orange and torque in red. And this time we can see our dyno pressure sensor doesn't max out like it did with the 82 tooth rear sprocket. This is exactly what we were looking for. Okay, we've achieved our goal today. We've changed the gearing and we've managed to keep the pressure in the system down uh, below its 200 bar limit. So essentially that's going to ensure that our results should be reliable and repeatable for this horsepower range that we're in. If we want to increase the horsepower going through the system, which is likely if we go to an unrestricted motor or have some more improvements in horsepower, we're going to have to either upsize our pressure sensor, upsize our pump, or both. The important thing from today is that we've found a way to get reliable data that is in the range of the sensor. Next thing we're going to do is do some tests uh, to see if we can see horsepower changes by making simple tuning changes. So we'll leave the sprocket setup that's on it, and our next couple of tests we'll do will be varying things like the settings on the carburetor uh, to see if we can see horsepower and torque change in uh, return to having different lambda values or different air fuel ratios. I hope you're enjoying the content. Uh, we're getting to the stage where we can work on increasing performance, and that's the whole idea of a dyno. So stick around. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, and feel free to let us know if there's something you want checked or some information you want uh, by hitting us up in the comments. Thanks very much.